In this video, we're going to create a way to reset the level based on a button press. So if I were to press backspace, you see how we will just reset the level. Um, we're just going to reload the whole thing. And most importantly, we're actually going to put this on the player controller so that in a case where we don't have access to the player pawn or whatever, our player can still give inputs to do things in the game um, separately from the pawn that they control. Okay, so in order to reload our level, the main thing that we need to figure out is what is our player controller that we're using inside the level. So if I were to hit the play button, and you look over here in your outliner, you're going to see some extra objects that get spawned in. And one of those is going to be the BP underscore SS player controller. Now, this is the player controller that I'm using because I created a new one, a new blueprint of type player controller. If you haven't done that, you can use the player controller that comes default or you can just make your own, which is just right click blueprint class, select player controller, create that, name it, whatever. And so that's how I got this right here, my blueprint SS player controller. Now, the other thing is you need to tell your game mode to actually use your player controller if you have not already done that. Now, for me, I created a new game mode the same way that we just saw right here, like game mode, game mode base, right? Like that. And the game mode allows you to customize some things related to your game. So part of this might be, you know, BP underscore SS player controller. This is saying in this level, the type of gameplay I want is related to this type of player controller. The whole point is I'm going to put my code in the blueprint underscore SS player controller. That way it's agnostic from the player actor. So if you think about it, we still want to be able to reload the level, even if the character doesn't exist anymore because the player is still playing the game, right? The character doesn't exist, but we want the ability to later on pause, reload, exit, and all that stuff. So I'm gonna put this on the player controller instead of the player character. If you wanna know where your game mode is hooked up, you can always check that in. Uh, world settings will sometimes override it, so you can always just plug it in there. Um, if nothing's plugged in there, it's gonna use whatever is in your project settings. So just be aware of that. Anyways, we know what player controller we're working off of, and that's where we're gonna put our code. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up our player controller. And if you don't see an event graph, just click this little button here, the open full blueprint editor. So now we'll have access to our event graph. And this is where I want to put my code. Now I'm going to make a custom event right here just to make this real clear. So if I right click and I type in add custom event right here, this top one, choose that. And we're going to name this reload level. Now we're going to put the logic here, but we actually need to call it from somewhere, which we'll put in a little bit later. So for now, in order to reload the level, we need our current level name, and we just say load the level of the current level name. So first thing is get current level name. Then we need open level by name, and then we're going to just connect these, and then it'll convert our string into a name like that. And all of this is just related to reloading the level. Now you may want to camera fade or something. I I don't. I just want it to reload instantly. But now I can call reload level from anywhere because anything can just say get player controller, then we can cast it to that and then we can say reload level. Now you may be using your reload level in other scripts. So for example, killing the player, you may want to reload the level. Now you can have your logic in one place and just call it from here if you like. I think that would be good practice. Okay, so the second thing we need to do is we need to put it on a input button press. So for me, I want the backspace button press. So I'm going to compile, save, and I'm going to set up a new input for this reloading level. Now I'm doing this for testing purposes. Later on, you may want your reload level to be on a menu, uh, like a UI menu button press or something. For now, I just want it on a keyboard so I can test my game with it. So we're gonna set that up as an input action. To do that, you're gonna come into edit project settings, and in project settings, you're gonna scroll down to input. And this will allow you to define all the inputs that are inside of your game. You may see some other ones here, but what I want to do is I want a button press. I don't really care about the access like negative one and one. I just wanna know when that button was pressed or released if you like. So go to your action mappings. I'm gonna create a new action map. So click the plus button. We'll call this reload level and we will assign it to a key. In this case, I'm going to assign it to backspace. So I'm going to start typing in backspace. All right, backspace, perfect. Uh, make sure that you don't click uh, backslash, that's different. Okay, once we have this set up, we can now call an event from our input inside of our blueprints and say, 
Hey, listen for the backspace press and then respond to it. So all we need to do now is if we want to reload the level on backspace press, let's go back into our SS player controller and we want to call this event and we can just call this directly inside the player controller. So you're going to see some people put these kind of input presses in the character. Sometimes you may want inputs in the character, but sometimes you want inputs that are independent of the character. Like imagine if the character did not exist, do we still want this input? The answer is yes. Then you probably want to put that on the player controller. So on the player controller, we're going to right click and we're going to say reload. If we type in reload level now, we're going to see call function or action event. In our case, it's named the same thing, right? So it's a little bit confusing. Make sure you choose the one that's underneath input because we want the input action event called reload level. All right, so when that is pressed and we already determined that that was from the backspace key inside of our input settings, then we just want to call reload level. So we just pull off of pressed, type in reload level, and in this case is popping up under call function. So we click that and all this does, it says when we press this button, we'll listen for it. And when it's pressed, we can double click here and it'll hop down and say call this event on this blueprint. So it seems a little redundant. You know, we could put this code right after the input press, but we want we may want to be able to call reload level from other blueprints as well, which is why we're breaking this out into a separate thing. Again, you could also make this as a function if you want, and you could collapse that down. You know, we're, I'm just trying to keep things real simple right now, but you could do that too if you want. Anyways, let's compile, save, and test. Uh, we can click in our scene, and if we press backspace, we'll reload. So hopefully this can help you out in any game that you like. Keep in mind that we're reloading the level. So anything that happened inside of our level up to that point will get reset to its default state. I'm also going to just move this kill volume out of the way just so we're not worried about it. And that's it. That's how we reload a level on a key press. Hopefully that helps you out.